For the following exercises, find the average rate of change for each function on the interval specified. All right, so let's just uh, recall what average rate of change is. And it's simply the slope okay, of a straight line that connects two points on a particular graph. All right. Now the first one here, how we can look at this is I'm going to look at this first one graphically. All right. Um, I think it gives a little better intuition as to how to view a, uh, the concept of average rate of change. So here we have our axis. And here, let me actually move this up just a touch. I don't even know if I moved that up, but maybe I did. All right, that's good enough. Just get on with it, right? So here's x, okay, and here let's plot y. Uh, recall that f of x you can think of as just simply y. All right, so I can also plug in f of x at the top here. It doesn't matter, all right? Um, so if I had to graph you know, this function, how would I do that? Well, basically, I just think of some values for x. I'll plug it into my equation here and see what y is. So if, let's say I plug 0 in for x. This equation would work out to be 2, right? So then I have a value of x being 0 and then y being 2. So I would plot this particular point right on the graph. So that would exist right about, let me just, that would exist right about here. Okay, then I would plug in a value of negative 1, let's just say for x, okay? When you square negative 1, it's a positive 1, and when you add 2 to it, it becomes 3. So now I'm looking at the coordinate negative 1, 3, and that is right here. And then I'm going to do the same thing for negative 2, let's just say, okay? So that'll be 4 plus 2 will be 6. So then I'm going to be right about here or so now on my graph, right? I'm going to be at negative 2 on the x and then go up 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all right? Now the graph is symmetrical, so you can plug in the values of positive 1 and, and uh, positive 2, and we realize we get these the points that look just like this. So now what I'm going to do is just try to draw a nice little curve through here. See if I can do that. All right. This may work. Let's see. Yeah. Let me try one more time. One more time, guys. One more time. Let's see. All right. I think this will work. All right. I'm just very particular, I apologize. Yeah, that looks pretty good, right? Now this graph will continue on forever in both directions, okay? So now, um, let's say you have to find the average rate of change. You wanna find the average rate of change between this point and that point. All you have to do is find the slope of this line. That's it, okay? Let's say you wanna find the average rate of change from this point to this point, okay, at the top. All you have to do is find the slope of a straight line that connects those two points. Okay, now the two points of interest we are looking at for the first problem is when x, and these this interval represents the values of x. So when x is negative 1 and when x is 2. So that would correlate with this point here and this point here. So how do I, so basically if I want to find the average rate of change, I just have to find the slope of this beautiful linear line I drew. How do we find the slope? Well, re recall guys that the slope is simply the change in y over change in x, aka y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. All right, now I have, these are two points, right? This point has a coordinate value and this point also has a coordinate value. The coordinate value for this point is negative one comma three. And the coordinate point for that is two comma six. Right, this is the x and that's the y, okay? So let's call this y2 and this one x2. Let's call this y1 and this value x1. Now we have everything we need to plug it into our slope formula, right? So remember slope here, m, is uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So now when I plug in the values, y2 was six, y1 was three, x2 was two, and x1 is negative one. So I simplify this, it becomes three over three, and that works out to be one. Now this right here, ladies and gentlemen, right here, okay, this value is indeed one, meaning the average rate of change. I'm like, uh, I'm sure you're like, yeah, I, you said that just before, I know it's one. Um, so this, this is the average rate of change, one, okay? Now, 
this is all fine and dandy. It makes sense when you look at it graphically, okay? But you couldn't have done this algebraically, right? You didn't need a graph to do this. All you have to do is take this x value, plug it in, find the corresponding y, okay? That would have given you this coordinate. Then take this x value, plug it in, then find its y value. That would have given you this coordinate, right? And then now that you have your two coordinates, just plug them on into your slope formula, okay? And you're good to go. That's basically now the steps that I have outlined over here for you. Find the y value for each x value of the interval, and then calculate the slope of the two points you just found. So let's take a look at the second example, okay? Now I'm gonna take this x value, let's call this x1, okay? So I'm gonna take that value, plug it in for x here. So then it becomes f of one, right? Remember this is just like saying y, okay? Is equal to four times one squared minus seven. So this simplifies on down to be negative uh, three, okay? So remember this is just like saying y, all right? So this right here is your y value. All right, if you wanted to, you could just erase this if it, you know, if it makes it look nicer. Just plug in a Y there. Plug in a Y for this. It doesn't matter, okay? Your coordinate now is that when X is 1, Y is negative 3. So here's your first coordinate. Now do the same process for the, uh, do the same process again, okay? So now here I'm going to be using X2. So now I'm going to take this and plug it on in for X, okay? Now, let's write that out. So this will be f of b. Oh, it's a letter. Who cares? Just plug b in for x. It doesn't matter. Don't, don't worry about it. Hey, forget about it. So this is b squared minus 7. All right. Then when I simplify, actually, well, can I even simplify this? Is there, anywhere to, is there any way to simplify it? No. All right. So this is essentially my y value. Okay. Just keep that in mind. So now my coordinates... For this being my x, this is my y, for b squared minus 7. Now, I know this doesn't look as satisfying as having a number, right? Letters are sometimes dissatisfying when we have it. It looks harder, but it's the same principle, all right? That's the beauty of math. It doesn't matter what this thing is. There's a certain operation of rules, and all you got to do is follow them. Who cares if it's B or 3 or 5? All it is is just strokes on paper, right? That's all. A 5 is just a series of strokes that looks like this. A B is just a series of strokes that looks like this. But we treat them the exact same way in terms of the routine steps of mathematics. So now, uh, given what we have here, we can now plug it into our slope formula, okay? Recall that slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's just label the values. Uh, since we called b x2, I'll label that x2, then this is my y2 value, okay? And just so we don't get confused with all the letters all over the place, this will be my x1 value and this is my y1 value. All right, so let's start plugging things in for the slope. So we're going to take the y2 value over here, all right? 4 times b squared minus 7. Then subtract that from, or subtract from that, my y1 value of negative 3. Okay, just be careful with the parentheses there. When in doubt, use parentheses. Then it's going to be x2, which is b, minus x1, which is 1. Now, from here, we're basically just going to do a series of simplifications. Okay, I'm just going to move this up to give myself a tad more space. So now, Simplifying the top, I know I can combine my negative 7 and my positive 3, essentially, right? That should be a negative 4. So now what we're going to have is 4, b squared. And you can kind of drop the parentheses now. It's not really a big deal. I mean, you can, all right? Uh, yeah, just drop the parentheses. It's fine. Um, so now it's going to be, uh, what did I say? Plus, sorry, minus 4, okay? All divided by now b minus 1. Now from here, you might say, okay, I'm done, right? Now this is an answer. It is the answer. But it's not the most simplified answer, okay? So why, usually in math, we want to give the most simplified answer. So now we've got to take this and simplify it. The first thing I notice is that the two terms on the top have a common 4. So I can factor that out, right? So it's going to be 4 now, b squared minus 1, all over b minus 1, okay? And let me just see if I can move this up a tad bit more just because 
It's a little dissatisfying to me that we are. All right, let me try that again. Sorry, guys. Four times b squared is my OCD all over b minus one. Now you might say, okay, great. There's nothing else I can do. I'm, I'm simplified as far as possible. Well, hold the phone. All right, we have b squared minus one. You need to recognize this as a perfect square, right? You can take this and break it on up into b plus one times b minus one. So now I can rewrite the top as four times b plus one times b minus one. And that's all over b minus one. Now notice what you can do. Lo and behold, we can cancel the b minus ones. And here we have it now. So now this is four times b plus one. And that is the average rate of change. Now it's not as satisfying because there's it's not a single number, but this is actually an interesting thing because it says, if your first point is fixed at x is equal to one, then whatever your second point is, it doesn't matter. Just take it and throw it into this equation now and you will know your average rate of change. It makes it a lot easier, right? So if you had to test out a whole bunch of second values, you just plug them into this formula now over and over and it becomes a lot easier instead of having to do this whole process every single time, all right? Now, last one. Okay, let's fly through this one, all right? I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. Okay, that's enough. Um, so now uh, we're going to, here's my x1 value, plug that on in, okay? So here we have g now of four. Okay, is gonna be equal to two times four squared minus nine. So remember, this is just like saying y, it doesn't matter. So this is g of four is now going to be, this, work, this works out to be 16 times two is gonna be 32. Okay, and then subtract nine from it, so that's a 23. All right, the coordinates now are, this is the x value, four, and this is, this is the y value, okay, 23. Great, so this is the first coordinate. All right, guess what we're gonna do? Now do the second one. Oh man, we got a letter again. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm so distracted right now. It actually reminds me of a famous comedian. I'm actually curious to see if you guys know. He says in, his, in one of his skits, he's like, Jimmy gave me a G. Uh, I'm probably butchering the heck out of it, but if you, if you know which comedian I'm talking about, um, leave a comment in the section below. Anyway, back to math. So two times now B squared minus nine. So here we now have g of b will now be equal to, I mean, wait a minute, I don't even have to, there's nothing to simplify, right? This is it. So now just write the coordinate out, okay? The x value was b, and the y value here was gonna be two b squared minus nine, okay? So now all we gotta do is take this and plug it on in, right? This is my x2 value we said, so therefore this is my y2 value, all right? This is my x1 value, this is my x, uh, y1 value. So now plugging into the slope formula, we take the y2. Okay, this is gonna be two b squared. I'm gonna just drop the parentheses for now. Two b squared minus nine. Okay, minus then my y1, which is 23. All over, okay, let me make that a little neater. All over um, b, which is x2 minus four. Okay, condense the top, simplify the top. So here we have two b squared this works out to be a minus 32, minus 32, all over b minus four. I know I can factor out a common two up there, so let's do that. So it's gonna be two b squared minus 16, all over b minus four. And now, oh, here we go again, a perfect square, right? You start to see patterns. So this is b plus four, b minus four, all over b minus four. And lo and behold, these cancel leaving us with the final answer now for the average rate of change of two times b plus four. Voila. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Really do hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe, help us out, and we'll see you next time. Take care.